We are going to learn how to make a terracotta warrior like the ones that were found in the Qing Emperor's tomb during the Qing Dynasty. We can look at some pictures of what the actual warriors looked like that were buried with the emperor. So you can see they were in different positions. Each one was unique, uh, different stances, some kneeling down. And what we're gonna do is do kind of a three part sculpture, starting with the base, the torso, the legs, torso and head. And we have our air dry clay. Mine is in natural color, but yours may be the terracotta color. It doesn't really matter the color. We're not going to paint them. But once you take it out of the box, whatever container it's in, you're going to cut out a piece and then put it back in the container that it came in so that it doesn't dry out. So it's important that whatever you don't use, you keep it stored tightly so that it doesn't dry out. It would also help to have a paper plate because you can build your a statue on the paper plate and it can also stay on the paper plate while it's drying. You can use a bamboo skewer if you want. If you want to leave your skewer in your figure, you may want to soak it in water first so that it doesn't expand once it's put inside the clay. You may also want to have some tools for carving such as your lawn toothpick. I also have a chopstick. I've got a knife. You could use a plastic knife. And then the templates that are available on the drive to see what the different parts of the warrior are going to look like. These are some student samples of figurines and you can see kind of different techniques that were used to build each figure. You start off with a base. So in this one, there is a round base and then the feet and the legs build up. The arms came off. I've had these for quite some time. Um, and then you attach the arms, the neck and the head. This one has a square base with the, le the feet and the legs, the torso, arms, and head. Um, this one has a smaller base, but then the feet are larger because you want to make sure that your figure will stand without falling down on its own. I also have an example in the three different parts. So here is one with the base, then the legs attached to it, and then the base of the torso attached to it. Then the middle part is the torso with the arms and the hands attached. And this one also has the neck or the base of the neck. And then the head has the neck, then the head, and then the hair piece or the top knot. And these were originally all attached, but I have them in three pieces so you can see. What we're going to do is work on the three pieces separately and then attach them together into one full piece. Now since I have a big block of clay here, I am going to take my knife and just break off a piece into different sections. So I'm just going to slide my knife right through. And you may help to have some newspapers covering your surface. I'm going to start with that piece. And I'm going to have two blocks here. And if I need more than that, I can get more later. But I'm going to go ahead and close this up and put it back in the box so it doesn't dry out. So I'm going to start with a base that looks like this. So I'm just going to take part of my clay block here. And one thing to note is I've actually clipped my nails because if you have long nails, um, the clay is going to get in there. So I just prefer to keep my nails shorter, but you, of course you can wash it off. So then it's just like kneading dough. I'm going to make mine kind of an oval shape. And you don't want it to be too thin. So I'm just going to pat it here so that the bottom is flat. And then use my fingers to round and flatten the edges. If your clay starts to dry out, you can keep some water nearby and just sprinkle some water on it. Okay, so that's going to be our base. Then I'm going to put the legs. And in this one, if you have the legs close together so there's no gap, it's going to be stronger base. So thin limbs are easier to break. 
If you see in this example, on the original ones, they were kind of triangular in shape. So I'm going to take one piece and start to mold out the feet and leg. So I want the feet and the leg to be in one piece so it'll be stronger. So I want the top part to be wide enough so that I can attach a torso on it. Okay, so that's one. I'm not going to attach it yet because I want to make my other one. And you want it to be about the same size. So I'm flattening that top part so that I can attach it to the torso. And then I'm kind of bending it so that I have the feet at the bottom there. And then I'm going to hold these two up and see if they're about the same size. So now I can sit the on top of my base. And if you just sit them on like that, they're, once it's dry, it's going to fall right off. So you want to use some kind of tool to attach it. So here's where the toothpick or plastic knife might come in handy. I'm just going to go around and make sure that it is attached firmly to the base. You can also use your tool to smooth out any rough edges or cracks on the surface. And another thing you could do is add some more clay to the back to make sure it's really on there. So this is a really important step because you want to have a strong base. If your base is not strong, the whole figure will fall down. Okay, so if you can see how the back is shaping up there, And you can even attach, try to attach the two legs together better. The more areas where they're attached, the stronger it's going to be when it dries. And I can go back and carve some details in there later. Okay, so I could work on those attachments more. I'm going to go ahead and go to the next part, and that's going to be the torso. So if you notice, um, there's kind of like a skirt and then the torso on top of that. So I'm going to make this bottom skirt part first. And it's a, kind of a trapezoid or triangular shape. The bottom part is bigger than the top part. So I'm going to try to smooth that out and then shape it for that trapezoid effect. So I want to smooth out the top part and the bottom part for those attachments. Now you could also, if you wanted to get more fancy, you could make holes that are the same size as the legs and attach them that way to make them really secure. But I'm just going to go ahead and lay mine right on top and attach it that way. Just make sure. I know right now it looks like it's attached, but you really want to go in there and make sure that you don't see those lines and that you really secure those attached or joint areas because when it dries, it's not going to stick. And if you want that line, you can go back with the toothpick and draw the line back in on the surface level. But we want to make sure that a good amount of the clay is attached into the piece below it. And they tend to kind of lean back, so I'm going to push mine forward a little bit. Now the next part is that torso, and that's going to be kind of a square or rectangle shape. And before I put it on top of it, I'm going to put the arms on it, because once you put it on the base, it may be a little bit harder to work with. One option is you could stick a skewer right down the center and that will help, help everything to hold in place. 
and then you can build on top of that. I'm going to take mine out right now and I'm going to put it in after I've attached this part. So I'm going to now add the arms. So if you look at the template, you can attach arms like these and then hands. Now, I accidentally used my torso for my arm, so I made a new torso and I attached the arm on the top of the torso just to make sure it's really secure on there. So I have my arms pretty close to the body and you can see I smoothed out the back so that it's attached real good. So I'm going to do that with this arm, put it on top of the body and then smooth it out to attach it. And then I'm going to smooth out the back. make sure that is attached and I'm going to bend my arm a little bit and bend the hand so then I can position it however I want then I'm going to go ahead and put the neck on it so I just made a little round ball and kind of flatten the top and bottom and I can even dig out a little opening at the top of the torso to place my neck inside And again, smooth it out real good to attach it. Then I'm going to make a hole again at the neck just to have a base to put my head on. And I just made a ball and rolled it to smooth it out. And I want the smaller end of that ball to sit on the neck. And then I'm using my thumb to smooth that out. And then you can reshape it if the neck is too big. You can use your fingers or tools to reshape it. You don't want your head to be too heavy either. And before I put my head on the torso, I can go ahead and do some carving now. So if you see in my sample head, I am going to carve out the hairline. And you could attach ears if you wanted to. I'm just going to carve them out here. Some facial features. And if you wanted the nose to be an actual nose, you could take a small piece of clay and attach it. It's a little bit tricky here. This is such a small piece and I don't want it to fall off. Just a little triangle. I probably should have done this before adding the other facial features. So I think that's a little too big. Chop that right off until it gets to be the right size. And then just another small piece for the top knot. And I don't want that to fall off so I'm going to smooth that out right over the head. Okay, and then I could do some more details by drawing in the fingers um, and adding some decorations onto the torso, that armor. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and attach it now. And here is where it might help. And then this is a little creepy because I'm sticking the skewer right through this guy's head. And I just want to make sure you get it right into the center of the whole body there. And if yours is staying together pretty well, you may not need to do this, but this just helps me as I continue to work on attaching that torso. Now I can move that skewer back and continue to smooth out the attached piece. And I may need to add a little bit of clay back here. So I'm going to smooth that out so it doesn't fall apart. So now I can use the skewer to move the whole thing as I'm adding details and continuing, continuing to smooth out parts that might be helpful as you're doing that. So there's different ways of doing this kind of sculpture. Uh, if you wanted to secure it some more, you could build up, make the base stronger by adding some clay to the legs and smoothing those parts out. But this is one way that I have found works. And then when you're done with everything, you can take the skewer out or you can leave it in and let it dry. Just keep in mind, if you leave it in to let it dry, 
it might change shape or expand as it dries the hole they get bigger so it will dry a little differently so if you see in the example this one has the skewer still in it so you can see the separation between the head and the neck if you're it still stays together though so if you're okay with that you can leave the skewer in and when it's dry you can just cut that off with some um, weed cutters or strong scissors or you can just take the skewer out when you're done with all the carving and smooth out the hole and let it dry that way.